Hi everyone, this is Kevin again for Beginners Aquarium and today I'm gonna talk a bit about live rock and my problem with it. Um, in the first video I think I mentioned that I had some died off live rock and that I thought it would get better just by leaving it like that. The shopkeeper of the first store that I bought every, everything in, including the aquarium, just told us to put on the light and then everything will go better. This however did not happen. I know it's a pretty short time, but still it was dying off more and more and more. So, as a beginner I started to panic a bit and thought like, oh, it's a lot of money and what if that totally dies off? Is it replaceable? Will it restore itself? what to do is there something i can do uh, or is it something that is the mistake of the shop so i went to a more specialized and bigger shop in brussels and i have to say i have never got so much information in so little time and so much help in a shop before those people are top of the line people you come there they help you they show you everything really it's not only the theory that they give you uh, like in most shops they can say like oh yes you need to do this and that and then it will go better they actually show you with real life examples in their shop so that was really good and i learned a lot from it especially when it comes to live rock now what is live rock you can find a lot of information on the internet and I would actually do that. I would go read up as much as you can because there is a lot of controversial um, ideas around live rock. Some explain it like this and others explain it like that. I will explain it to you like most explained it to me and like I um, saw myself a bit. Because you can actually see it. Um, if you keep your water values every day like I do or every two days and you will see what happens in the cycling and what contribution your live rock has to it. Now, live rock is just rocks of reefs that fall down or due to a storm or whatever. Um, or maybe people actually go like break them off. I hope not because I hope they let the reefs intact. But normally the way I hear about it is that they get damaged like by storms and they fall off and those are rocks that they pick out of the sea and transport to shops. Now there are two sorts of bacteria, well probably more but two important ones. The most important one that you hear about is the one that actually speeds up your cycling time because if it's very important for you to understand this and at first I kind of neglected all of the chemical things that were happening in the aquarium but it's very important and it will like um, change your view on how to keep an aquarium the first time I was thinking of an aquarium I was like how to keep the fish alive and yes that is the most important factor but the fish are kept alive but because of all the good bacteria in it because they do the job for you they are the most important thing in your aquarium, so you should take good care of them and they will do all the rest. Um, so on the rock, two important types. One type is that is transported with um, like the rock from the ocean and they speed up the cycling. They put ammonia, which is produced by, for example, if you drop, drop some dead organic waste in it, like a dead shrimp, it will produce ammonia. That ammonia will get turned into nitrate, uh, nitrite. Excuse me, nitrite. That nitrite will be produced into nitrate. That's the first important bacteria's function. So that's the cycling process. But that is not the end of it. And some people don't mention that when I ask them on the forum why it is so important to get live rock. It speeds up your cycling time tremendously so if you put in uh, uh, like 10 percent is suggested 10 percent of the amount of water the volume that you have in your aquarium in my case this is normally uh, around 30 kilo of rock although it doesn't look like that um, 
but it is 30 kilo and my tank is 250 liters I think that is about 65 gallon if I'm not mistaken um, so it's 10 percent that's the normal value so second bacteria is the one that actually puts those nitrates into gas and that is very important it breaks down the nitrate and puts it into the nitrite nitrite gas sorry in English it's a bit hard for me to pronounce um, so that gas is not as harmful as all the rest before it ammonia very harmful nitrite a bit less harmful but still harmful nitrate not so harmful as, lo as long as you keep it um, below the suggest uh, suggested 15 ppm um, but some can really go higher it kind of depends on what fish and corals you have in it and what kind of tank you have um, so anyway it's very important that you understand the process that happens and the bacteria that are on it so live frog just transported out of the sea with the colonies of bacteria whereas dry rock it doesn't have that and dry rock will take a lot longer to cycle but what are the differences between dry and live is that with live rock you can also have unwanted hitchhikers like mantis shrimp they can kind of make a mess of your aquarium and you don't want that so when you go buy a live rock ask the shopkeeper if it is good cured live rock maybe like how long it was in the store already and I will explain you why you need to ask that later because that's my problem and just check it a bit ask him to turn it around and just inspect it like take a rock with a lot of life on it you will see it there will be maybe some uh, like worms on, uh, on it or snails and that's very good for your aquarium as long as there are not any harmful um, things on it it's good now the problem I had with um, the dying off is that my shopkeeper didn't tell me how old the rock was it was maybe my fault as well because I didn't really know um, what to look for in live rock so he just gave me rock and I was like oh happy it's all red and purple but as you could see in the previous movies it started to become very white and it's better bit now it stopped um, the die off um, but still yeah it was dying off very fast and it didn't uh, stop so what happened was I went to the other shop in Brussels there they inspected it inspected my water values saw um, how much time my light was on during a day and yeah the conclusion was after inspecting one of the rocks that the shopkeeper where I bought it from had sh uh, sold me old live rock that was almost dying by itself already but he treated it with purple up some people might know purple up but to the others I will ex uh, explain in a sec I don't use purple up in my aquarium purple up is a product that you can buy on the internet or in your shop that will like make your color coralline algae bloom more and then you get the effect that you saw in my first video of the nice red and purple colors on the live rock but since I don't use it the rock is dying off it doesn't get that product anymore um, so it, it, it can't keep the colors so it's dying off now they gave me two options either start treating it again with purple up but that should be for the, a very long time he said minimum a year so I was like hmm yeah okay it sounds like a simple solution but it's more stuff that I need to put into my aquarium and really I prefer to just let things be and, and don't influence it too much everything should do uh, good itself so I don't wanna like oh this and that I, it's not a cooking lesson you don't need to do this and that in it so it's better to just stay away from all those chemical products if you don't need to use them or if you have another option second option was to buy a bit more live rock very good quality live rock um, and just put that in and that one will seed the other ones again and it has been 
two days, three days now, and I can actually see a little bit of difference. I need to take a, uh, you need to take a very good look because in that short amount of time, not much will change yet. But I have the impression that the die off stopped um, for the most part, and that some of the coralline al algae are actually still blooming. Uh, well, blooming again. So yeah, that's the mistake I made by not looking into live rock before I actually bought it. And if I waited too long with this, I don't know if it is reversible or not, but I'm a bit upset because that costs the live rock that I bought in the shop. Uh, first shop that was like 300 euro, 350. And that's a lot of money, so for that money I expect it to be pretty good quality as there it was 13 euro, uh, euro a kilo and in the other shop it's only 12. Well, that's only 1 euro difference, but the big difference lies in the quality of stone. There, they in Brussels, they let me see like what is in um, the live frog, how it looks and what the bad side and the good side is. and. and all of that information and that's very good that's a shop you want to go to a shop where they don't give you much information just say yeah that's good rock just put it in your tank it's no good because how do you actually know that it's good rock you don't they just tell you something and yeah so just read up a lot on it first and then go to the shop ask as explanations there and if you don't fully trust it don't just say, yeah, I'll buy it anyway, I have my aquarium ready at home. Um, don't do that. Go home, think about it, maybe go to another shop and make sure you buy good quality live rock. Um, you don't have to put everything in at once. If you are on a budget, like I kind of am, I spread it a bit. It takes Your cycling time takes longer because every time you put in new live rock, it, the nitrite spike will go up again and then you will prolong your cycling. But it is not harmful, it doesn't really matter if you put it all in at once, then you just have a shorter cycling time. That's all there is to it. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, then one thing is that I got this book. It's the Dutch version of it. Um, in Dutch it is 500 Raadgevingen voor het Zuidwater Aquarium. There is, the original one is a, a English version and it is original title 500 ways to be a better marine fish keeper published by Interpet Publishing um, and I think that it's a very good book they have very very like good information for the total beginners like myself um, how to start up a tank like just from the beginning to the end like better starting they give you tips what to look for also with the difference between dry live rock um, like with al uh, algae and um, corals and everything and one thing that I didn't know is that you actually can like um, have for your aquascaping which I will come to in another video as I'm still practicing myself um, but that you can buy like sort of stands that you can put your rocks on. It saves you some space and it makes sure that you have a good aquascaping structure. Um, so it's like a lot of information also on the lighting, how it works, um, spectrum of light which is important, um, uh, the bacteria of, on, of your rocks, um, everything is really explained. Also later if you want to um, have some offspring um, of your fish then they explain like how to do it very good book not too expensive not really sure how much it costs as I got it for my birthday very lucky me um, but I really recommend it for the beginners it's really ace and that was kinda it um, for this video most important part is that you remember what live rock is good for, um, what to look for in live rock and that you understand the cycling process a bit better. I know I explain it in short as it's not of much use to you if I go explain everything fully in detail as you can read it on the sites I will link to you 
in the description of the video um, and it's up to you if you want to know more or not but I would really recommend reading as much as possible because it is so so important that you understand what those bacteria are good for and that they are the main reason that your fish are being kept alive so that's it until the next video bye